So is Zaharoff Signature Rosé the perfect unisex rose fragrance? Let's review it and find out. Hey what's going on, Hunter here and welcome back to my channel. And if you are new, what I do is I make fragrance related content. So if you love fragrances, go ahead and hit the subscribe button down below. And also be sure to follow my fragrance Instagram page. But that is right, guys. Today we're reviewing Signature Rosé by, of course, Zaharoff. Now, Zaharoff is a niche house that I absolutely love. I remember reviewing the original Port Home and absolutely falling in love with that fragrance. George Zaharoff, who was actually the owner of Zaharoff, is such a great, incredible guy. I actually had a live stream, which he actually came into, and we pretty much talked it up. Fragrances, the business, and everything like that, and some new upcoming releases of Zaharoff. So if you didn't catch that live stream, definitely go check that out. You'll find that on my live stream playlist. And this bottle was actually sent as a gift from George as well. So shout out to George. Thank you very much, man. He is such an incredible classy gentleman that just supports YouTube creators such as myself and pretty much everybody else as well. So yeah, shout out to him. So let's go over some information about Signature Rosé. So this fragrance was launched in 2021. So it is one of the newer flankers within the Zaharoff line. As far as retail prices for a 60 mil goes, you can pick up a bottle for $145, which I think is an absolute bang for your buck, especially for the quality of these fragrances. Now this is an Eau de Parfum concentration and of course the perfumer behind this one and the entire Zaharoff line is Claude Deere, who is a master perfumer. And what he has done with the whole Zaharoff line, such as the original and all the flankers, is absolutely incredible. How he actually maintains the original DNA from the signature Port Ohm, and he still includes it within all the flankers, even though they are pretty different. So yeah, that is just awesome. With all the information out of the way, let's go and look at the packaging and presentation of Signature Rosé. So take a look at the box. It does come in this kind of rosy kind of colorway which looks great with the roses behind the Zaharoff logo. 60 ml bottle, like I said. On the top, you will find your Zaharoff logo as well. On the side, you do have the, the Zs in different colors, such as uh, the silver for Noir, I believe the yellow for Royale, and then you have the red for Rosé. Some of your information right there, also in black ink. And then on the bottom, you will find your barcode and I think probably a batch code as well to authenticate your product to see when it was produced. And then it opens up like so, and your fragrance will be housed in there. So yeah, I think the box is absolutely incredible, and it feels of quality. Now let's look at the bottle. So take a look at this bottle now. I absolutely love the colorway of this with the pinkish, reddish, rosy kind of juice inside with the cap. So half right there, Signature Rosé. On the bottom, you will have your sticker with some information and your badge code. And it actually has the half embossed on the bottom, which is a nice touch. Nothing on top, and then you have the Z right there as well. Now, I do got to say that George actually upped the quality of his bottles because the original pour home I have actually contains a plastic cap. This one, on the other hand, is metal and extremely heavy with the Z added inside as well. And it clicks into place very nicely. And you can hear that metal on glass contact, which is great. So, yeah, I love the bottle presentation. In the top, you have Turkish Rose and Bulgarian Rose. In the middle, you have Bulgarian Rose, Amber, Chinese Peony, and Jasmine. And in the base, you have Olibanum, Myrrh, Oud, Australian Sandalwood, Sugarcane, and Bourbon Vanilla. And this fragrance would be classified as a Floral Oriental. So let's go ahead and spray this one and test out the Atomizer. Very nice distribution on the Atomizer. It's not really pressurized, but it actually does spray quite a bit of juice, which is nice. So in the top of Signature Rosé, of course, from that note breakdown, you're going to expect a very rosy opening. And a very rosy opening is exactly what you get. But to me, it actually comes across like a bouquet of a bunch of different roses, which it does have, such as Turkish Rose and Bulgarian Rose. But the way this is blended together in the opening, it is always changing. I know one time where I wore this one on skin, it smelled very sparkling and like a pink rose. And then another time I wore it on skin, it came across like a red luscious jammy rose. So you do get the quality of both. And that's what makes it very, very unisex with the sparkling pink rose on the feminine side. And then you have that jammy red kind of a uh, luscious red rose on the masculine side of things. And the rose in this fragrance comes across extremely natural to my nose that I even included it to represent the rose note in my 10 notes video. That is how much I love this rose based fragrance. I got to tell you right now. And if you're a guy watching this one and you're kind of like uh, scared of florals or rose fragrances, you're worried that it might smell like your grandma or something like that, 
Trust me, do not be afraid of this one here. It's one of the most masculine rose fragrances that guy can pull off 100%. Also, especially as it dries down, it does become even more masculine from the resins and woodiness and obviously ambers and stuff like that. But in the middle, once it does start to dry down a little bit, you still, of course, get the roses in this composition. But what actually starts to make its way in is that warm golden amber note. And I just love the way it comes across in the middle of this fragrance. But alongside that, you do have jasmine and peony listed. I don't get any jasmine in the fragrance, but I do get a slight peony note. Now, to be honest with you, peony is actually a floral that I don't usually like to wear. I do like to smell it more on a woman than myself because I think of peony as probably the most feminine floral within perfumery, at least in my opinion. Thankfully for me, I don't get much peony, especially on my skin. Maybe if you're a female watching this one with your skin chemistry and stuff like that, the peony might actually shine a little bit more. Luckily for me, I don't get much of it. It's a little bit more in the backbone of it where if you actually have to dive into the fragrance to be able to pick up on the peony, it's not a main player whatsoever. Now, as you make your way into the deep base of this, obviously you have a bunch of resin such as alabanum, which is very similar to incense. You also have myrrh, which I love myrrh. Also oud, sandalwood, and that vanilla. Now, what shines the most for me is the alabanum, myrrh, and the oud, which does resemble the original Port Ohm. That's what I was talking about with Claude Durr did with the whole Zahara Flan, it does still have that signature DNA of the original being re really warm and resinous. And also do not look at this fragrance like an Oud Rose combination fragrance because that's not really what it is. I don't get a lot of Oud within the composition. I don't really mind, even though Oud is my favorite note of all time, just the Rose Oud combination, it's very outplayed and just overdone at this point. So. It's mostly just a rose resinous fragrance rather than the rose oud combination. Yeah, the myrrh, alabanum, and also the vanilla does add a very kind of creaminess to the composition as well. Very sweet also from that myrrh, which is like a sweet resin from my experience. And yeah, I just absolutely love it. There is a sugar cane note listed, which might be added to the sweetness alongside the myrrh, which just doesn't come across extremely sweet like sugar, which is a good thing for sure for me. I don't like overly sweet fragrances, but it just composed absolutely to perfection. I'm telling you that right now. I just am blown away by the quality of this fragrance. Also very, very professional and it's just kind of classy as well. And that's what Zaharoff does the best in my opinion. All of his creations are just so elegant, so up class and just so sophisticated. So yeah, if you're looking for a very professional kind of rose fragrance, you got to check this one out. So that's going to lead us into the seasons and occasions best for this one. So for seasons, I got to say, this will be perfect for the spring, fall, and winter, which is just awesome that you can get a rose fragrance for obviously the very cold weather like fall and winter because usually florals, especially rose as well, works the best in like spring, maybe sometimes summer, depending on how it's actually composed. This one, however, being very warm, resinous, and cozy, and creamy as well it works perfect for the winter time so if you're craving a rosy kind of fragrance for obviously the colder months when it's snowing and just very very freezing this is the fragrance for you so for occasions this one is definitely more on the formal side of things rather than casual it just doesn't smell casual to me whatsoever if you're just running errands in a hoodie or shorts or what, something like that. Well, I actually picture Signature Rosé perfect for as like a, a date night situation. And especially if you're a guy with a rose fragrance for a date night because it is extremely romantic, it will have your woman kind of questioning like, whoa, he smells very nice, very kind of a luscious and romantic and something she would probably never smell in a guy before that is just wearing like Dior Sauvage or something you find at Macy's. This one is very different and just extremely romantic. But for gender and age groups go, like I said, this is an extremely unisex rose fragrance. A woman can pull this one off perfectly alongside a guy being able to pull it off perfectly as well. It just works straight down the middle, which is very nice to have a rose fragrance that is extremely unisex on both sides. But for age groups though, this one does come across a little bit more mature than juvenile. There's nothing really playful about it, nothing youthful about it. So it is also on the mature side of things. As far as age groups exactly goes, I would say anyone probably 20 and up can pull this one off the absolute best. So let's finish things off touching on the performance. Now, the performance behind Signature Rosé actually blew me away for being a floral, even though it is oriental, being very kind of warming and creamy. It was probably one of the best from the entire Zahara line from my testing this far. It absolutely just blows me away how strong this fragrance is. I got easily 12 plus hours on my skin. 
with probably a foot and a half of good projection for maybe around four hours until it starts to settle down a little bit closer to this game, which isn't necessarily a bad thing because like I said, this is a very romantic fragrance that will have people wanting to come closer to you to smell you. So yeah, this performance blew me away with Signature Rosé. So that's gonna do it for my review of Zaharov Signature Rosé. Let me know down below if you have any experience with this fragrance in particular or the House of Zaharov in general because trust me, this is a house that you would definitely want to check out. They just make some of the most classy upscale fragrances in the entire fragrance industry. So yeah, definitely highly check them out. I'll leave their link down below where you'll be able to browse their entire catalog of fragrances. And they do have quite a few at this point and some new upcoming releases coming in 2023 that you should be keeping your eye out for. But if you did enjoy the review, leave a like on the video, subscribe below if you haven't already, and I'll catch all you guys in the next upload. Take care, everybody.